those who uh, who uh, are still here, uh, my name's, oh, something else has popped up. Uh, my name's Theo, not lunch. So uh, hopefully I can uh, not be the barrier to lunch. So I'm from Arcadis. Uh, it's, Arcadis is a global uh, consulting and design uh, agency. Uh, we uh, sit in various uh, areas. I sit in the mobility team. And uh, for me, this is, this is really about how uh, we can look at multimodal transport hubs as uh, uh, an energy hub. So for me, um, an airport is, is, is a good case study. I spent uh, 13 years at Heathrow. Uh, so I, I, I sort of got a little bit of understanding about airports. So ultimately, airports as a, as a transport hub are probably the, the biggest and uh, um, best examples of an integrated transport hub. You've got surface access, which is to and from an airport, uh, and the energy that that consumes and the movement there, but also um, the aviation side itself in terms of um, uh, what the airport consumes in terms of its own energy. Because if you think about uh, a transport hub and whether or not it's, it's, it's an airport or, or other multimodal transport hubs which we'll come on to, they consume a significant amount of energy. So on one hand, they're a consumer, and on the other hand, they, they may be able to act as, as energy hubs. So to some degree, this is a kind of a, a run through on that. So you know, just to give you some idea of, 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 of energy consumption of an airport. So if you take somewhere like Heathrow, um, consumes 3,500 gigawatts of, of energy a year. That is coming down because ultimately the airport wants to keep its electricity bill down as well. So lots of change is also coming in that space. So the introduction of of LED lighting, uh, better systems controls, et cetera. So, so that num number's coming down, but it gives you an idea of scale of that. Um, and I, I like the fact, it's a great one, that Heathrow consumes the same amount of electricity as the Isle of Wight. Um, so uh, it's a huge consumer. And if we take where we are uh, here around Birmingham, um, much less consumption of energy, but still you can power a, a significant amount of homes from the energy that an airport uh, consumes. And typically, where does the uh, energy come from that the, the airport will use? I've focused on electricity rather than um, other aspects, but the majority is consumed in the terminal buildings itself. You know, to heat a building, to cool it, all the systems that you take for granted at the airport, most of them are run on electricity. Um, but when you look at that, you start to look at what's coming new into this space. And down the bottom, you've got some new consumers that are coming in there. Uh, you've got ground-based vehicles. So there's a, a significant shift to uh, EV uh, in ground-based vehicles, but also hydrogen. It was interesting, uh, the comment there about having a, a hydrogen vehicle. There's actually a hydrogen filling station at Heathrow. Um, so uh, one of the very few at, at an airport. Um, but the ground-based fleet is growing, um, and that's the buses that serve an airport. Uh, the public transport uh, that, that will get you to and from, but also private vehicles. But on the other side, you've got um, the air vehicles that are coming. And we've got two types of air vehicles uh, that will appear at airports. One is evolutionary that we've heard a bit about with um, e-planes or hydrogen planes or other fuels that are coming there. But the other one is revolutionary in terms of uh, advanced air mobility or EV toll or air taxis, or there's a whole raft of names for these aircraft, but they will consume a significant amount of energy. So if an airport is a consumer of energy, um, and as you saw from the amount of energy that an airport kind of has to have available to it, um, you've got to think there's a better way. So if you take the sources of, uh, of energy that an airport has, um, or where it sources it today, Typically, it's from the grid. You know, big cables coming in, big substations. Um, there is some generation on site for some airports where they have combined heat and power stations, where again, they, they uh, generate some of their own energy and heat. But also, more and more now, there's, there's on-site renewables. Stansted itself has recently got planning consent for uh, a solar, solar farm that it's going to build next to its airport. Again, it's looking at its own consumption of energy and how it can support itself. But looking at the new sources of energy, you know, solar, as, as we mentioned, using biofuel, um, depends where you are, because ultimately, you know, there are, there are hydro options or tidal options, depends where your airport is. Um, I put mini nuclear on there. Rolls-Royce have, have, have talked about 
creating mini nuclear plants. And looking at the consumption of an airport, it could justify it in some, some aspects. You know, everyone gets worried about nuclear, but um, it's, it's, a, it's a fuel source. But then wind, hydrogen, uh, geothermal, again, not necessarily in the UK, because I'm looking at this global. There are airports that are actually heated by geothermal um, sources. But also, when you have energy, how do you store that energy? Because um, when you look at solar or wind or other forms, you've got to be able to store it. And, and hydrogen is a really good vector for storing energy. But, you know, but you've got batteries as well. You can store power to be, to, to be able to use. So, okay, the airport's a huge consumer of energy. So when does it use its energy? Because ultimately, if you've got all this capability and capacity, are you using it all the time? So um, there's two different examples there. Um, I'll let you guess which one is Heathrow and which one isn't Heathrow. Um, one that starts really busy, is busy all day long, and then drops off at the end. Whereas another uh, example of an airport has fluctuating use of energy. And that just gives you a gap. It gives you a, back, a gap between the energy you have available to you and the energy that you might be able to use for something else. So understanding how airports operate um, is very similar to any transport hub. So I could just take the word airport out and I could be talking about any interchange because they all run very similar models. So some will start up early in the morning, keep going all day long and drop off. But others have a fluctuating pattern of demand. You know, you have peak demand, off peak demand. So it's looking at that peak and, and, and base demand to see what the gap is and what can you do with that energy. Because ultimately, if you have the opportunity and there's a gap between your energy consumption and your energy availability, there's a surplus. And what can you do with a surplus? You can push it back into the grid. You can store it. You can change it. So you can use electricity, for example, to create hydrogen, which you can then use. Um, we've looked at the sources of fuel that are coming into an airport, but they are also available too. So if, if hydrogen is being used at an airport, it can be used and commoditized as well. But also that surplus can be used for um, looking at private networks. And this is where you start to get into the whole idea of an airport giving something back and creating energy uh, communities around, uh, around it. You know, typically with an airport or any big interchange, it's always a negative story about what the airport does to the air. It can offer a huge amount of positive benefit um, as with most public uh, transport interchanges. Um, so on that, you've got to look at the sustainability of, of delivering that in terms of uh, commercial sustainability. And that's why I put the pound sign, because surplus is a new business model. It's the way that companies can actually generate new money. So if you've got energy and you can uh, uh, identify a surplus, you can sell it back into the grid. And in selling energy back into the grid, that allows the grid to become more sustainable, more resilient, or you can store it and use it at, at, at other parts of the day. So ultimately, if airports can, can do this, and this is a different model, how could it be for seaports or rail stations or bus stations or other mo multimodal hubs? It's, it's simple. I, you know, I like to keep things nice and simple. This is all about how much energy is coming into the facility, What's your demand or the facility's demand? What's the gap? And what can you do with that gap in terms of a, an opportunity to use that energy in a, in a positive way, in terms of whether or not that's new business models, that's looking at sustainability in its wider sense, not just the environmental sustainability, but also looking at the uh, societal benefits that you can deliver with all the energy that you have available to you. And then finally is the economic benefit, because ultimately, Energy costs money, and we all know from the energy crisis that we have at the moment. So if there's a new, new way of, of using this energy to create more financial and uh, sort of commercial opportunities for an airport, they're more likely, or any transport hub, to do that. And we, we heard earlier about um, the amount of power that Transport for London consumes, but they don't consume that all day long. So TfL must have... Uh, the capacity to share some of its energy to its local areas as well. Um, and that's why going through some of the um, uh, agreements that they'll do, they'll have the opportunity to do that. 
So I guess in conclusion for me, it's, it's all about if airports can div deliver this kind of um, sort of energy solution where you've got availability, consumption, and service, any inter in sort of integrated transport hub can do the same. Thank you.